digestive tract, Winston said. So you can have anxiety in your digestive. And the way to tell is, you know, IBS is one thing. Anxiety causes that. IBS isn't always related to anxiety, okay, for those of you that say that's not related to that, okay, but the two often occur together and can make each other work. The gut is very sensitive to psychological stress and vice versa. The physical and social discomfort of chronic digestive problems can make a person feel more anxious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that. Oh, that seems to Tina hooking you up right. That you know what you need to look out for. That's just one of them. The other one is stage fright. If you suffer from stage fright. Those of us that have to get up there in front of people. So you suffer. I get a little anxious, but then it leaves. It just it leaves. I'm a little nervous in the beginning. <laughs> never to the point like the bridge, but then it leaves. So mine's never stay. Stage fright. Most people get at least a few butterflies before addressing a group of people or otherwise being in the spotlight. So strong that no amount of coaching or practice will alleviate it, or if you spend a lot of time thinking and worrying about it, you may have a form of social anxiety disorder, also known as phobia. Okay, People with social anxiety tend to worry for days, weeks leading up to a particular event or situation. And if they do manage to go through with it, they tend to be deeply uncomfortable and may dwell on it for a long time afterwards, wondering how they were judged. If that's the case, I think everyone has some of this. <laughs> Unless you just don't care. You know, if you just really, really don't care what people uh think of you or something like that, kind of like the president. (laughs) He he definitely don't have any stage fright. (laughs) Okay, self-consciousness. Social anxiety disorder doesn't always involve in speaking to a crowd or being the center of attention. In most cases, the anxiety is provoked by everyday situations such as making one-on-one conversation at a party or eating and drinking in front of even smaller numbers of people. In these situations, people with social anxiety disorder tend to feel like all eyes are on them, and they often experience blushing, trembling, nausea, profuse sweating, or difficulty talking. These symptoms can be so disruptive that they make it hard to meet people, maintain relationships, and advance in work or at school. Now, there's times that I have difficulty talking on this show, but I just think it's just part of the Murphy's Law to come along with Michelle. (laughs) Anyway, they're called self-conscious anxiety disorders that you may have. Okay. Now, panic. Ah, ah, I know this one. (laughs) Panic attacks can be terrifying. Picture a certain gripping feeling of fear and helplessness that can last for several minutes, accompanied by scary physical symptoms such as breathing problem, a pounding or racing heart, tingling or numbing hands, sweating, weakness or dizziness, chest pain, stomach ache, and feeling hot or cold. Yes, all of that is associated with a panic attack. Not everyone who has a panic attack has an anxiety disorder. Repeatedly may be diagnosed with a panic disorder. People with panic disorder live in the fear about when, where, why their next attack, attack may happen. They tend to avoid places where attacks have occurred in the past. Well, no, I don't have a disorder because... I don't live in fear about when or where. I mean, mine's would just blow up in the tunnel. But you won't know because I'm cool. I'm too cool. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm sweating going over that bridge. And those are called the uh, panic, uh, panic attacks. The next we have flashbacks. Flashbacks, reliving or a disturbing or traumatic event, 
a violent encounter, the sudden death of a loved one is a hallmark of a post-trauma stress disorder, PTSD. A lot of that our military guys go through. So if you ever wanted to know what is that when um, those guys are on medications and heavy drugs and stuff like that, that's what it's called. It's called a PTSD, which shares some features with anxiety disorders. Until very recently, in fact, PTSD was seen as a type of anxiety disorder rather than a standalone condition. So it is a standalone condition. But flashbacks may occur with other types of anxiety as well. Some research, including a 2006 study in the Journal of Anxiety Disorders, suggests that some people with social anxiety have PTSD, like flashbacks of experiences that may not seem obviously traumatic, such as being publicly ridiculed. These people may even avoid reminders of the experience. Another symptom of reminiscent, another symptom reminiscent of PTSD, PT perfectionism, mm, mm, mm. the finicky and obsessive mindset known as perfectionism goes hand in hand with anxiety disorders, Winston says. If you are constantly judging yourself or if you have a lot of anticipatory anxiety about making mistakes or falling short of your standards, then you probably have an anxiety disorder. Mm. Perfectionism, perfectionism is especially common in, guess, you, you guessed it, OCD, <laughs> obsessive compulsive disorder, <laughs> or OCH, or OCB, obsessive compulsive behavior which is like a PTSD, has, a long, has long been viewed as an anxiety disorder. OCD can happen softly. It can happen subtly, like in the case of somebody who can't get out of the house for three hours because their makeup has to be absolutely just right, and they have to keep starting over. Did you see that video? I had sent, I had posted a video. It looked like it was taken in Japan. It was a group of Japanese people, and they had this woman that every time she took a bite to eat, she would put her spoon down, pick up a mirror, and fix up her lipstick every bite she took. And the woman that was sitting next to her, I guess she couldn't take it anymore. So so she finally grabs the woman by her head, takes the uh her napkin, the woman lips completely. <laughs> and then she got up and walked away. Now that was a case of O C D. Every spoon she took, she touched up her lipstick. It was crazy. Okay, the next one is called punk compulsive behavior. Okay, you may not have O C D, but do you have compulsive behavior? In order to be diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, a person's obsessiveness and intrusive thoughts must be accompanied by a compulsive behavior, whether it's mental, telling yourself it'll be all right over and over and over again, or physical, hand-washing and straightening items. A lot of people. (laughs) So don't get it mixed up. With OCD, OCD is perfectionism, okay? So when you're talking to your friends or talking to your to your wife or your wife is talking to you and say you have OCD, know the difference with people. It's perfectionism, is OCD order. Now, compulsive behavior is doing the same thing all over again, all over again, like washing hands, straightening items. Well, I guess what she had was, uh, I don't know, I guess she had a little bit of both, (laughs) OCD and compulsive behavior. (laughs) So obsessive thinking and compulsive behavior become a full-blown disorder when the need to compete to complete the behavior is also known as ritual. 
begins to drive your life, Winston said. If you like your radio on vol- at volume three, for example, four, would you, you would be in total panic until you can get that fixed. <laughs> yes, that is compulsive behavior. And we all know someone that has a compulsive behavior, whether it's ourselves, our kids, or someone in our family or someone we work with. We know someone with a compulsive behavior or an OCD. So that's like something is a little bit like that in, in everyone, I think. You know, because we all have things that we just kind of don't want out of place. So, okay, the next one is self-doubt. Persistent self-doubt and second-guessing is a common feature of anxiety disorder, right? Including generalized anxiety disorder and OCD. In some cases, the doubt may revolve around a question that's central that's central to a person's identity. Like, what if I'm gay? Or do I love my husband as much as he loves me? Hmm. OCD Winston says, these doubt attacks, they're called doubt attacks. Did you know that? I never heard of no doubt attacks before, but apparently they are a, a form of anxiety. Okay. It says doubt attacks are especially common when a question is unanswerable. People with OCD think, if only I would know 100% for sure whether I was gay or straight, either one would be fine, but they have this tolerance for uncertainty that turns the question into an obsession, she said. Wow. That's really something. I bet you didn't know all this, did you? But that's what it is, those were the 12, okay? So we have the 12 signs. This is the golden briefly. I'm not going to read them again, but I'm just going to say. Um, excessive worry, GAD, that's a type of uh, a disorder, okay? You have sleep problems, and that is associated with, G- with GAD, falling asleep or staying asleep. Irrational fears, um, animals, clouds, and things like that are considered as phobias. That's a form of anxiety. Muscle tension, um, where you're constantly flexing your fist or flexing muscles throughout your body. Those are considered as a disorder. <laughs> and... Uh, Chronic indigestion associated with IBS is also a form of anxiety disorder. Stage fright, when you're worrying and not getting your sleep because you think something is, um, you can't, you're worrying about something, either good or bad, you're anxious, that's a form of anxiety. Self-consciousness. When uh, you feel like all eyes are on you, uh, you're having trouble making one-on-one conversations, and even drinking in front of people, that's a self-conscious anxiety disorder. Panic attacks, when you have a certain terrified fear or a gripping fear that can last for several moments. And it's usually accompanied by physical symptoms such as breathing problems and Racing heart, um, a panic attack is an anxiety disorder. So uh, they're usually maybe, they also can stand alone as a panic disorder as well. Flashbacks, that's what a lot of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, a lot of our military goes through that. Um, Events that they may have experienced or uh, been through either in boot camp or on on assignment. Um, They are called PTSD, flashback experience. Perfectionism, having a finicky and obsessive mind. It goes hand in hand with an anxiety order. Constantly judging yourself, Mm -hmm. 
a lot of anticipatory anxiety about making a mistake, things of that sort. That is a 